All right, thank you guys for uh, coming and uh, hanging out with us at Pleb, uh, Pleb Lab for this startup day. I am Max Sikorsky. I am the founder and CEO of Eden 3D Printer. And our main, as I have the text box on the screen, thank you. Um, as you can obviously see, it's uh, a 3D printer company. Um, I really like to mainly focus upon uh, the manufacturing of the actual hardware itself rather than the various prints. Uh, and we have a pretty in-depth suite worth of products, uh, most of which are uh, most recent that we have just started to uh, deliver um, just in the past couple weeks is, uh, let's see if I can zoom out a little bit here for you guys. Um, whoops, there we go. That's an, there we go, got it. Thank you, perfect. Um, if anybody is familiar um, with 3D printing, um, the Voron style Core XY machine is a very, very high quality chassis, uh, similar to your um, Perusas, as we have just a very simple uh, Bitcoin print um, right now, just for a demonstration. Uh, but what really Eden 3D printer is all about is assisting you and turning your thoughts into things. How can we help you get your thoughts into a physical product and actually use that? Um, I really do uh, prefer to assist in constructing the machines rather than doing uh, printing for you. Um, we, we, there's many, many people that will provide those services, but um, it's, it's very, to me, I find it very important to be self-sovereign in that sense. I don't want to be your custodian for your Bitcoin in the same sense I don't want to be your custodian for your product development in that sense. Putting those skill sets at uh, your disposal rather than relying on somebody else. Uh, we have a, a relatively small team uh, with a tremendous amount of help. Uh, obviously, myself, um, Ryan Slot. Uh, and Justin Ragland, uh, uh, both uh, meetup organizers um, as well, designers and uh, marketing team um, for us. So just, just very lightly on uh, a couple of the product suites that we do have and offer. Uh, obviously, we provide our hardware and the machines. If anybody uh, is interested in actually manufacturing for themselves, uh, there is a full suite for our vertically integrated farms. You can go and request a print. Any file that you would like, any image, feel free to go and upload that right to the website, and we will coordinate with you to get that print done. Uh, we have a pretty in-depth studio, actually. Uh, so if you have an idea, give us a sketch, and we can go and turn that, again, thought into um, a thing. I want to highlight, uh, at, funny enough, uh, there's actually a couple people here in the audience, which is really exciting to see, that uh, actually is a customer of one of our limited products that we uh, coordinated with between uh, the Bitcoin company and uh, Marty and Matt at uh, TFTC and Rabbit Hole Recap. Um, and that was our uh, stacking sets uh, character. Um, what was really unique about this was there really was no uh, near frequency communication products uh, in the market as of last year. Um, so I, we're, we're definitely not the first to do this, uh, but I find it very important to be able to provide your own proof of print or you know, where was the product actually manufactured. So in all of our products, uh, we are uh, embedding NFC chips um, into 3D prints when you get, so you know where, where it came from, um, where it was sourced, manufactured, all that. Uh, and of course, we all now have a bolt card or sats card. Simply go and tap the device, and it brings up whether your LN URL address or proof of print verification. So as of last year, as of um, after uh, actually Miami um, 2022, all of our products are embedded with NFC chips. So you know exactly where it's uh, sourced from. Uh, it, I find it really just standardizes the whole process uh, for everybody. Um, on top of that, oh, let me go back over here real quick. There we go. Oh, before I even get to that, let me pass out a few things here. Just, just for example, these are just small little products and things, various things that we can go and do. Some of these are multiple prints, meaning that there's a couple things incorporated with that. Some are one single print.
by a printed place product, it moves. But you ask how? How does it move? Well, the design is as such where there is gaps in between whether uh, you're at the gimbal and it rotates uh, or the fire truck. And these are just very, very simple examples here um, of what is just uh, capable of being manufactured. Um, so if you can, again, have any kind of concept, you're not limited to your manufacturing capabilities at this point anymore. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are probably wondering why is uh, 3D printing incorporated? I, I know a good portion of you uh, know us, but why is 3D printing incorporated with a, with a Bitcoin lightning hackathon? And my, to me, my answer is obvious for you. As Bitcoin is distributed money, we have a distributed manufacturing machine. So it's really one and one as they coincide together. Um, and uh, we just had... Uh, a couple people drop off uh, another printer here too, so you got even more, more manufacturing to do. Um, uh, where was this at? Here we go. One of the things we've been working on for quite a while, uh, and actually Super Testnet in the uh, back uh, helped construct this, uh, is our Eden 3D network. Uh, I would actually show you our network, but I have the server uh, in my book bag at the moment because I will be doing a impromptu hackathon to complete uh, that build process tomorrow. And the real benefit there is how possible would it, or how incredible would it be to have a feature set where I can either go on to somebody else's website or self-host my own store and receive inbound requests to produce products at a profit for sats. Uh, so again, Super built this um, quite a while ago actually. Um, and it incorporates just that. Find a designer within your local geographical region or globally as you uh, uh, would like. Upload what you would like to print. Coordinate with the manufacturer. Pick a color, any size or scale that you would need. Um, and pay with sets over the Lightning Network for that. Um, again, this was uh, quite a while ago. Passwords are dying, as we know, so it is uh, LN uh, URL authenticated, so we can go and log in with our Lightning Node or Lightning Wallet. Um, but I do hope to show you a uh, light demo, possibly, uh, even if it's just in the GUI, just on uh, Sunday, just to uh, get a good example of how that would actually work. Um, again, I'm on a different laptop. I would show you just a basic print of what we just did, uh, but on, uh, uh, what time does the uh, uh, hackathon start tomorrow? Nine? Nine o'clock? Um, Any time in between. Um, again, I was going to do a little demo of what we just printed there for you. Uh, but if anybody would like, we will do an impromptu uh, workshop. We've done workshops in the past. I know Gary just um, uh, left at this moment, but we've been very gracious to have Gary uh, host us at BitBlock Boom for several years for various workshops. Um, uh, at Miami as well. Um, but if anybody would be interested in how you actually go and uh, 3D print, we'd be more than willing to get a couple of us together and uh, learn, learn the process. But just, just quickly, show of hands, first and foremost, how many have a 3D printer? Oh, I like that. There we go. Okay. How many actually design on their own? They, they make their own products. They make their own CAD designs and stuff like that. Wonderful, wonderful. We got, we got a couple people. It is a process to go and learn the full suite um, to, again, turn, turn that thought uh, into a thing. So if anybody is interested in learning how to do that, we can do a very light walkthrough. Just, just real quickly, I know you, you raised your hand. What's your uh, CAD software that you like to use? Inventor. Okay, nice, nice. Better than uh, Tinkercad for for entry levels and things like that. But it is a good base, base to start. Um, it's, it's, it's a quite easy process to, to get in, uh, but it's um, a, little bit, a little bit of upfront work to understand what is limiting in the printing process, but also what is the, the ep complete exponential upside. Uh, again, the fire truck is a great example of that, flexible materials and things of that nature. But, Again, just, just for context, you can see how very quickly you can make something. Um, here we go. A 
Again, I just want to do something very, very simple, very quick. Again, you can turn your thoughts into things, anything that, anything that you want to make very, very quickly, you can go and produce. So, again, it was a little bit more in-depth, but that's all right. We can go and improvise with that. So, again, very light introductory presentation for myself and what we do. Anybody have any questions in regards of 3D printing or anything adjacent to that? Car, go ahead. So when you made that big like logo right there, is it using the 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 string or the as the ink? Is that what it's doing? Yeah, so the process uh, it takes uh, this is called filament and it is just rolled up plastic, pulled out into a certain diameter, and it goes through your tool head which is also called your hot end, and that takes your hard plastic, remelts that into the very specific pattern that you would like to go and build that geometry. So there are different types of materials. Again, you saw your flexible you know, pleb lab. This was uh, more of a harder, high temperature uh, plastic. There is TPEs, TPUs. Uh, you have more engineering grade materials to uh, use things for outside or for in very high temperature or high stress environments, mechanical parts. Um, this, just for example, this is PETG, identical to PLA, very common, very available, very readily, uh, readily available and very cheap. Um, but the real benefit for that is it's a little bit higher temperature and it is a little bit more uh, stronger in order to take certain pressures. Um, this is actually uh, a Perusa, just brought it for, again, a quick light example. And this is what you would call um, a, a rep wrap machine. What does that mean? That is a, a printer that prints itself. And you could see the orange plastic parts that are holding together either the motors, steppers, various other components alike. And that is all made out of that exact same material. It's two pounds, 2.2 pounds, a kilogram, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, depends on what you, uh, what you want to use. But um, I, I really highly encourage people that... For the show of hands we did get that we're involved with 3D printing, I, I highly encourage you to take that next step and next leap. Uh, very simply, a micro center or an Amazon purchase for a beginner Ender 3 uh, printer for less than $200 is a wonderful, wonderful machine to beginning to learn on. You will have some uh, time to calibrate, but if you're really into it, you'll figure it out pretty quickly and you can scale uh, rapidly from that. So, yeah, shoot it. Yeah. Please, please go ahead. And funny enough, just for context, these were the two gentlemen that were uh, asking me questions while I was calibrating and preparing this. So they, they're, they're kind of leading into that. Uh, but it, exactly to your, uh, both of your points there, my vision of where 3D printing is going is out of that hobbyist stage of just producing a plastic toy or things that you just saw right there. You're getting now into the engineering grade materials, but also with uh, just, just for one of our um, uh, Eden Edition Voron style machines, the Core XYs, just simply here, these are called bed slingers. It's just kind of a slang term. Easy to build, you know, very readily available, cheap. They're not quick. You might have a little bit of calibration issues as well. If you have a bed that's stable, you can print orders of magnitude faster, uh, let alone now we get into more complicated materials. We can get up to thousands of dollars for a pound of plastic or uh, I didn't even bring any of our metal, uh, honestly, I didn't even think about that, bring any of the metal 3D prints um, from simple machines just on the desktop side like that. But even to go kind of into both your questions there, 
how do you, as the user, actually interface with these machines? Um, as some people know, for uh, the past couple times at either Bitblock Boom or in Miami, TabConf, uh, several other conferences, uh, you've probably seen uh, my larger workstation, which actually has a full desktop computer uh, incorporated on top of the actual manufacturing hardware itself. Getting to your point, uh, kind of what Ben, we were talking about earlier, I, I want to be able to see what I'm building on the print bed before I build it. There's no machines that are doing that today, and I don't see any you know, foreseeable future besides my, myself and maybe you know, one or two other people uh, that are doing that. But the two main points I would, I would argue there are the machines are going to exponentially faster as you either lighten up the tool heads, uh, you keep the base stable. I mean, this tool head is moving um, at one meter per second, a thousand millimeters per second, and you're getting halfway decent parts as you incorporate higher uh, levels of engineering into the software side to calibrate your resonance and so on and so forth. Let alone, uh, how is that actually being interacted with? I gave you our uh, you know, kind of connect style example there of interacting with the model even before it's being built. Uh, my frustration was always going between either my laptop or my desktop and then over to the machine. Uh, and, and I understand that this is the setup now for just an example, but uh, there, there should be no excuse that all machines in the future um, have everything incorporated into one unit for that sim simplistic use. You should be able to buy a printer, turn it on, and it just works. Meaning the design process, the slicing process. I apologize, I don't have slicing on this um, laptop, but uh, to actually turn it into a model that the machine can actually go and read. We see it as CAD. I mean, I've, I've been you know, hoping it was like three to five years out, but I said that seven to 10 years ago. So um, it's probably a classic three to five years out. Uh, we see Bamboo Labs starting to come into the marketplace, kind of taking off of the Core XY design to improve the speed, improve the output. There's multiple um, uh, filaments on one tool head, so you can go and print multicolors. A couple of those prints were around there uh, that had multicolor in there. Uh, what is the, what's the step you know, to make it more easy for the end user? You want a, you know, a six or seven year old to go and make a five, six multicolor, not only multicolor, but multi-material product and have it be very simple Hey Siri, 3D print me a you know a spoon. We we we're getting there, but again, it's that three to five years out. But I said that seven to ten years ago, so we just have to continue to uh, wait and see. Yeah, go ahead. Oh man, if I had a if I had uh, ten sets for every time I've heard somebody ask that question. Um, honestly, I would say my favorite things to print are. Either the flexibles, you know, a rubber, you know, a bit like a rubber material. I, I just, I just find it amazing that, that you can add multiple materials or colors into one you know, flexible unit, or uh, like the uh, truck or the gimbal that you were, uh, the keychain gimbal that you had there, the print-in-place models. Uh, that's for me. That's really where three D printing, not only um, you know, th um, uh, is 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 the only way to manufacture, but it really thrives because you can't see and see that. I can't injection mold an axle on the inside of another piece of plastic or another piece of material there. So uh, being able to incorporate that layer by layer um, manufacturing process, I would argue the print in place models are just really cool. And, and if you can incorporate something that's flexible for a little kid not to get hurt or Something along those lines. I, I, I think the print in place, you know, models, per, um, preferably, you know, in a softer material, is really, really fascinating to print. And it is challenging. The 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 more rubber materials, not not that hard, but there is a couple excess hoops to jump through for that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I didn't even get into the different styles of machines there. This is uh, what you call a F. FDM style, uh, or a FFF, FDM is actually a patented name, but it stands for 
oh man, I always butcher this, but it's like it's a uh, uh, it's filament deposition modeling, I believe, filament or fluid deposition modeling. But it's in, it's exactly that sense where you have a roll of plastic going into a tool head, remelting that into an organized geometrical pattern. Whereas what uh, you're Chris, right? Else, um, you're uh, actually doing the same process with a resin-based machine, but it's actually coming out of like a liquid plastic. Um, I prefer FDM style, frankly, because it's less of a mess. I can easily take the part off, and I don't. I have little to zero post processing. Um, just a slight footnote on the post processing for additive manufacturing. There is still work that you have to go and do after you've manufactured the part. No different than taking your model and turning it into a physical product. With resin, it's liquid plastic. You can already possibly envision what you need to do to remove that excess liquid off of what has already been solidified. So how that works, again, FDM, hard roll of plastic, goes into the tool head, makes the uh, geometrical pattern, resin or liquid you know, based 3D printing kind of rises out of the swamp, if you will. But there is light underneath that is curing at a certain time, uh, 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 a, a time delay, if you will, on one second, five seconds, 10 seconds, moves it down and grabs the excess liquid and then moves it up as it continues to keep building. There's a significant amount of post-processing with that. It smells. It's an irritant to your skin. You do have to go and cure that even after you clean the excess resin off. So there's multiple steps that are hazardous, and you do have to consider uh, those factors. So if you're just getting started, I would definitely stick to that. But the benefit for resin is you're limited to about 200 microns of actual high quality detail so that's you know 0 0.2 millimeters you can get finer but it's it's kind of negligible at that point with resin you you can't tell the difference it's as smooth as glass almost you're at you know anywhere between 5 and 25 microns you know practically invisible to the human eye it's not very functional for mechanical parts as these are but if you're doing more um, hobbyist modeling or uh, top um, kind of tabletop you know, characters and things like that that you want to go and paint, uh, that's where you would go and uh, utilize resin. So there is a place uh, for each style of 3D printing. Go ahead, Super, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, that would just be subtractive manufacturing, so that'd be very similar to CNC or water jet as well. So you kind of like start with a block of aluminum or or steel, and then it would go and it, it'll cut away at that excess, and then you'd end up with your final part. But it, it, um, not necessarily. Actually, Seed Hammer, if anybody uh, is aware of a um, kind of project that is coming out, they are. Uh, producing a machine that can go and engrave your own uh, seed phrase in a metal backup um, platform. Uh, so that would be kind of in tune with more of a desktop CNC machine. Um, a separate topic, but I believe the, the product uh, called the Ghost Gunner does the same thing. It's just a desktop you know, CNC machine, and it mills away at your aluminum block or your steel block. Uh, but it's very similar to the traditional subtractive manufacturing process. But there are significant advantages of 3D printing over other methods of manufacturing. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's another benefit of being in Austin. Uh, the company is called Icon. It, I don't know exactly who manufactured the one in the park, but there's a major uh, well-funded um, uh, concrete 3D printer uh, startup that produces homes. And it's in, it's in this exact same method. It's a big old nozzle that puts a proprietary type of concrete in there. It cures very quickly. That's the benefit here. You have fans 
to cool the plastic so it solidifies, makes it nice and hard for you to go and build on top of that next layer. Same thing for um, home building. F funny thing I learned about uh, 3D printing houses is I haven't talked to any of the team members over there, uh, but there is only like th like one or I, I can't remember how many companies there is. There's like two or three companies that only have produced at most like four or five projects. So you want to talk about being early in the space. You know, go and build yourself a large concrete 3D printer and try to get a neighborhood built in the next couple of years. You will be number one with the most print time. Um, Icon came out with an article from one of their, I can't remember if it was their CEO or if it was their uh, chief of engineering, in regards of how much time to print a house do you need to be considered a professional? And he said, you need to produce two homes. Two. <laughs> it, yes, exactly. Get started, right? Um, so I, I find that fascinating of how little amount of time that the professionals are saying that you need to be one of their peers. So that just shows you how early we are in 3D printing homes. Same thing for 3D printing metal. Uh, I was connected with a, uh, a startup in, um, not in Silicon Valley, actually, out in the um, Los Angeles area. Uh, they actually 3D print their entire vehicle out of metal. Now, it's a multi-million dollar car, uh, but the entire car is 3D printed out of metal. Similar process to a resin printer, where you have layers being built on top of a light beam, whereas these are just heating up and melting. Uh, but you're getting about the same quality. But just imagine the type of metal powders that you're getting into, you know, now and the 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 just the exponential amount of new materials that you can produce with that. Go ahead. It's two parts. They're producing a better product, similar to what we said about the print-in-place models. I can make geometry inside of something. You, again, I can't see and see that. I can't injection mold that. Okay. The second part is um, Divergent com um, uh, commented on the environmental impact of vehicles. It's not the tailpipe. It's the foundry producing or the stamping plant. And you're putting hundreds of millions of dollars of upfront CapEx into your infrastructure to go and build out and then you have to break down your costs. So now you got to produce 10,000 or 100,000 units whereas with 3D printing I can just produce one exactly how I want it and then the third part on top of that which is just a compounding effect how fast can I iterate on top? I don't have to go and change the tooling right? I can just hey I don't like that design let's tweak this you know slightly here slightly there. So great question Great, great question, but it's, it, it's, in, it's really incredible how fast you can iterate and the um, uh, manufacturing end products that you can achieve with like those print and place things. So uh, I, I definitely want to give a shout out to, to Pleb Lab, whether they uh, know it or not, they've definitely given informal um, uh, advice on, on uh, either fundraising and sales and stuff like that. So I, I, greatly, I greatly appreciate uh, all the all the help and advice I've gotten from uh, Pleb Lab and, and several other VCs uh, and uh, incubators in the area as well. So again, thank you to Carr and team uh, for for all their help. But any more um, questions, comments? Oh, one more. All right. There is um, processes that already have that in place, but exactly to your point, when do I see 100,000 units that I can just walk up next to a Coke machine? Um, I, I find it comes down to how well you can maintain that machine. Whether you like it or not, this is mechanical hardware at play, and you do have to calibrate that. Fortunately, with 
you know, in Eden Edition Voron style, it's less calibration. Same thing for a Perusa. There's less to do up front versus an Ender or any other lower level model there. But um, it's it's really how well can you build the 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 hardware to not bounce out of calibration. Sure. Yeah. So that's really what Bamboo Labs has kind of shook up the market uh, in regards of not only printing fast, printing consistent, but being able to do multiple materials. So just basic different colors. Exactly to your point, they've integrated certain hardware on the back end that the regular user just doesn't see. It automatically wipes the excess filament away versus that little piece that you saw kind of fly off here. Same thing, how do I go and change material? There's an automatic splicer that goes and cuts in the back, swaps the material, knows exactly how much to purge if you're going from, let's say you're going from black to white, right? That's going to be a lot more plastic to kind of purge out to make sure you get that color rather than you're going from, you know, navy blue to, you know, a dark purple or something like that. So um, kind of in a time frame, you know, market, we're really already there, but to the vending machine style, I've had people ask me to construct vending machines, and I'm like, I can only do so many things at once. Um, uh, you're, it's probably that similar time frame, but it's, I don't think it's three to five years. You, you, you might see it in the next 24 months. I, I, really hope, I, re, I really hope you do. You just walk up, you know, pay a lightning invoice, and uh, honestly, you just go right on your app, you request it, and then you go to your local you know, coffee shop and... It's already done, ready to go uh, when you pick up your coffee or you pick up your, uh, your DoorDash or whatever you're uh, getting there. So um, it's probably a lot sooner than we think, uh, but it's, it's, it's just like anything else. It's happening in iterative you know, steps, and it's until we piece all that together where you get that massive big leap. Any other more questions? Well, thank you guys very much. If you're interested, please find me tomorrow. We'll do a workshop. Thank you.